My daughter is joining the company, so I need you to resign today. Today is your last day. It was on the morning of the 20th that I was suddenly told by the president that I was fired. Huh, um, but I was surprised and at a loss for words. The 20th was the payment day to our suppliers. Although there were bank transfers for some long-standing suppliers, I would go and make direct payments, also serving as a courtesy call. You look like you can go home right away. I'll give you the day off, especially for you, so leave quickly. I was pushed forcefully from behind out of the office, and the door was shut with a snap right in front of my nose. I had no idea where to start objecting. My name is Emily. I joined this family-owned paving company right after high school and have been a clerical worker for ten years. Or rather, I should say, I was a clerical worker until just now. There were about 20 employees, and when the current chairman was the president, the workplace atmosphere was good. It was a very easy company to work for. Even the chairman, who is now retired from the field, used to work proactively with the younger employees, and Catherine, his wife, would come to the company every day to handle miscellaneous tasks until the chairman was hospitalized. Kelly, their daughter, was a versatile person who could handle both field and office work, and her husband as the site manager was trusted by the employees who worked on site. Just because they were the founding family, nobody acted haughty or looked down on the employees. It would have been nice if the enjoyable and trouble-free company life had continued as it was, but unfortunately, reality was not so sweet. At the end of last year, cancer was discovered in the chairman during the company's group medical examination, and he decided to retire as president, appointing Kelly's husband, the site manager, as the next president. Both myself and the other employees unanimously agreed. Everyone agreed that the chairman should focus on treatment and that they wanted him to live a long life. However, suddenly, the chairman's eldest son, Tom, who I didn't know where he heard the news from, appeared with his family. It seems that the chairman had another child besides Kelly. Tom had been disowned about 30 years ago, and I didn't know about it at all. According to the senior employees, Tom was a notorious bad guy in his youth, and he was often in trouble with the police. Whenever he caused problems, it seemed that the chairman and Catherine would go and apologize. After dropping out of high school, he started engaging in multi-level marketing and fraudulent-like activities, and the chairman finally disowned him. Despite having been out of touch for a long time, Tom suddenly showed up one day, shouting, "'Dad, I was wrong all this time. Forgive me!' and pleaded before the chairman." I was shocked, since the company was small, and there was only one room for both the president's office and the clerical room. I witnessed the whole thing and remember it well. Tom said that he wanted to let bygones be bygones and work together in the company, but I think that's not a phrase to be said by someone who's been disowned. I apologize to everyone, but I beg you, I want you to give Tom one more chance. Kelly and the veteran employees seemed unable to fully rejoice since they knew about Tom's past, but no one could refuse when the chairman pleaded like that. Thus, Tom's family came to live in the annex of the chairman's house, and Tom became an employee while his wife took charge of the household chores as a housewife. The daughter seemed to be a college student, and I only saw her once when she came to the company. The chairman said, having struggled in the world, Tom must have become decent now. Catherine was also crying with joy that Tom had come back with his family. They were talking about building up the company together from now on. But then a problem arose. Tom insisted, I'm the eldest son, so I should be the next president. The relationship with Kelly and the site manager became strained. In front of the chairman, he pretended to work hard, but in reality, he did nothing. 
He kept making power harassment like comments, such as physical labor is what the workers do, and you are worker ants, work in silence. He was quickly disliked by everyone. Some of the younger employees even went directly to the chairman to say, I can't work like this. But both the chairman and Catherine only pleaded and said, we will scold Tom, so please look at this with a longer perspective. Then, whether due to stress or something else, the chairman's cancer suddenly worsened, and he was hospitalized three months ago. Then Tom declared, I am the president the employees advised the chairman and Catherine to make the site manager the president as originally planned, but in the end, they chose Tom, their blood relative, over their daughter's husband. Some people even started to grumble, saying things like, they're blinded by parental love or they've become senile. The once harmonious and joyful atmosphere of the company completely changed, and it became all tense and awkward. Everyone thought that things can continue like this, and finally Kelly started to take action with the site manager behind the scenes. Consequently, I ended up being the only one handling the company's administrative tasks until now. It was Catherine, Kelly, and me, so I could leave on time. But now, I have to work overtime every day. It's not unusual for the date to change before I leave. Even so, Tom seems to think that administrative work is just a leisurely task. The president himself spends his time going to hostess bars during the day or going out to bet on horse races or go gambling. My relationship with the president deteriorated dramatically due to an issue with an expense. He used the company's credit card for his private dining and entertainment expenses, and to some extent, I have been turning a blind eye to it. But this time, it was at an unacceptable level. I braced myself for his anger and handed the receipt back to the president. This expense cannot be approved. What? Why? This is your wife's corrective underwear. It has nothing to do with the business, so it cannot be expensed. As expected, the president's face turned red with anger. Don't mess with me. She is the president's wife. It's only natural for her to dress up. It's an expense. No, but it's underwear and your wife isn't an employee either. I stammered in reply, wondering how the president could think that a $4,000 expense for his wife's corrective underwear could possibly be justified as a business expense. What he said next was even more incomprehensible to me. Then let's make the sale of corrective underwear our new business venture. That way it will be considered a purchase, so it's an expense. The president looked smug as if he had come up with a brilliant idea, but I was dumbfounded. Um, we are a paving company, so what? We can tell our clients that if they don't buy from us, we'll cut off their contracts. Everyone will buy, we'll make a fortune, $2,000 for one, $4,000 for a set. It's an easy business. The president laughed loudly, but I was horrified. That's absolutely unacceptable. It will cause a credibility issue. In my anger, I snapped at him. And from that moment on, I became the target of the president's disdain. From that day forward, I was constantly berated by the president. It was so hard that I considered quitting many times, but I continued to endure and work, motivated by my desire to help the chairman who had taken care of me and my concern that everyone else would be in trouble if I left. The reality was I would be in trouble too if I suddenly lost my job. I thought I would just endure it until I was ready to move on, but then I was abruptly fired. If I quit suddenly now, it will cause trouble for our clients. I took a deep breath and opened the door. I can't do this. I can't just quit on such short notice without any handover. Even your daughter can't do the work. Besides, today is the payment day. I said all this in one breath, expecting the president to become furious. As I thought, the president's face turned red with rage. Shut up! I told you to quit because my daughter is joining the company. Today is your last day. 
As for the payment, just let them wait until they come to collect it. There's no need to pay them proactively. Excuse me, isn't it normal to pay for something once you buy it? I was so taken aback that I explained it like I would to a child, only for the president to say something so unreasonable that I couldn't believe he was a rational adult. If that's the case, just threaten to change to another supplier. Tell them we won't go to make the payment this time, so they should give it to us for free. What? That's not something we can do, is it? I was so flabbergasted that I was at a loss for words. You're utterly useless. My daughter has a college degree. She can easily do office work. Since she's family, she won't complain about what I buy, unlike you, who's all talk and no action. We don't need someone like you in our company. Get out now. In other words, the president is probably thinking that by having his daughter handle the accounting, he can easily write off his personal expenses as company expenses. Oh, is that so? Just remember, I won't regret it. It's hopeless. Words are no longer effective. My patience has finally run out. I gathered my personal belongings and left the company in a hurry. But still, I felt bad for our clients. I called Kelly. I knew Catherine was busy nursing the chairman, and Kelly was also occupied, but this was an emergency. I explained the situation and left the rest to Kelly. Once I left the company, I suddenly found myself with nothing to do. Being fired without notice is a clear violation of the Labor Standards Law. If I reported to the Labor Standards Office, they are done for. Since our company was enrolled in the middle company payment system, I can claim my severance pay and one month's salary. The middle company payment system is a government severance pay system for small and medium-sized enterprises, a strong ally for companies that can't prepare severance pay on their own. But I don't need to rush the process since I can apply within five years from the date of retirement and the statute of limitations for the Labor Standards Office is two years. Due to my professional habits in office work, I calculated the necessary procedures and schedule for retirement and concluded that I could take it easy for at least a week. Lately, I've been constantly working overtime and on weekends, unable to do anything at home, and there are many places I wanted to visit once I settled down. So I decided to go on a day trip to the beach. After refreshing myself at the beach, I checked my smartphone in the locker and found several missed calls, emails, and voicemails. Checking the email, I found a message from Kelly saying the payment went smoothly, everything is prepared. I was relieved. Even though the president suddenly told me to quit, I felt guilty for leaving my job in anger. Next, I listened to the voicemail from the company. It was the panicked voice of the president saying, Hey, what's going on? You're saying I'm not the real president? Did you know this? Explain yourself properly. Has he finally realized what a stupid president? I couldn't help but smirk. Then I checked my emails and voicemails one by one. I listened to a voicemail from the chairman and promptly decided to go to the hospital, when I arrived at the chairman's hospital room in the evening, not only was Catherine there, but the president was there as well. As soon as the chairman saw me, he abruptly greeted me on the bed. Emily, I'm truly sorry for my foolish son. Hey, what's going on? I'm not the official president. Explain yourself, Tom was arrogantly shouting, unable to grasp the situation. But the chairman quickly shouted him down. You be quiet. It seems that right after I called Kelly, she immediately contacted the chairman and Catherine. Upon hearing this, the chairman hurriedly called Tom the president and asked, Don't you really know anything? So what's going on? I calmly spilled the beans to the president who was shouting without understanding the situation, saying, Basically, Tom, you had no legal influence. You were a president in name only. It might be a confusing and unclear story without knowledge, 
but president is a term that indicates a role within the company, not a role defined by law. The one who represents the company and has external responsibility is the representative director, and it is entirely different from a mere president. The title of president alone can be freely changed within the company, but to change the representative director, complex procedures are necessary, and it's quite a hassle. Three months ago, when it was decided that Tom would become president, there was intense opposition from Kelly, the site manager, and veteran employees, so I proposed a method to make Tom a nominal president while keeping the chairman as the representative director. As a clerk, I knew about the difficulty of the procedures and the laws related to the company, so I came up with this method. If Tom changed his heart and worked seriously and was accepted by all employees, only then would we begin the legal procedures. Conversely, if Tom was deemed unfit to be the president, the plan was to either dismiss him or close the company, with Kelly and the site manager preparing to start a new company. Kelly didn't think Tom's personality would change. The chairman and Catherine had believed in Tom until the end, but it seems they were awakened when Tom unjustly dismissed me. If you want to be an entrepreneur, study hard and take care of your employees. I told you many times, it's not a big deal, isn't it? We can just do the procedures now, right? No, it's impossible. You see, our company gives company stock to employees who desire it, and most of them have it. Emily owns 10%, so she's a major shareholder in our company. We can't ignore Emily's opinions, and the other employees who own company stock will certainly not side with you. Gradually absorbing the situation, the president's face turns pale. What, could I have stocks too, right? Zero. I was planning to give you my shares once you truly became president. I'm deeply disappointed in you. You were only after my wealth, thinking that I have only a little time left, weren't you? The chairman slumps in despair, and Catherine also falls silent with a sad look on her face. The president brazenly retorts, Of course I'm the eldest son. What's wrong with taking what I can get? The company is mine. I couldn't forgive him any longer. No, that's not correct. The chairman holds full responsibility as the representative director of the company. Plus, I'm a shareholder. I can request a shareholders meeting and seek the president's dismissal. Understanding the word dismissal, the president turns pale rapidly. You mean I might get fired? Damn. Weren't you just an office worker, Tom? Emily is right. Now that things have come to this, no one will stand by you. Only Emily spoke up to give you a chance. Catherine then opens her mouth. Emily, I truly owe you an apology. I'm sorry for causing you trouble out of love for my son. Please tell me what you'd like to do. I look at the president. President, I don't want to work under you anymore, so I'll quit right now. However, I will take my severance pay, and I want you to pay my one month salary, including unpaid overtime and holiday work. I will also report to the Labor Standards Office, and as a shareholder, I will fight thoroughly to remove anyone harmful to the company. As I smile and speak, the president turns from pale to completely white. I go on to tell about how Kelly had been visiting clients and successfully promoting our new company. Most clients have given up on our current company and have decided to switch to the new one. Almost all of our employees are also planning to move to the new company. That's impossible. I'll sue you, the president threatens, almost in tears. But the chairman dismisses him. I am the representative director. You have no such rights. Then the president can no longer stand and collapses to his knees. I feel indescribable. Mr. President, it's a shame that this happened. If you had changed your attitude when you returned, it wouldn't have come to this. There were many chances to understand. If he had repeatedly tried, researched, and studied, the one who squandered the opportunity was none other than the president himself. 
a complete case of reaping what he sowed. Later on, eventually, the chairman closed down the company, and Tom became unemployed. The president's wife started selling corrective underwear, but it didn't sell at all. They were reported for malicious door-to-door -door sales and were eventually arrested for pyramid scheming. When Kelly returned to her parents' house for an errand, there seemed to be several boxes left filled with the forceful underwear. The daughter seems to have found employment at another company, though the details are unknown. I now work at Kelly's and the site manager's new company, and I can work happily every day. I want to continue to cherish my relationships with people and live sincerely, 